What's your discipline? You a stoner? That's cool. So are we. I'm high a lot. It's weird to finally say that with pride. I'm high a lot. Being high has helped me with my anxiety. It's helped my social skills. Love and light. Welcome to Discipline Stoners Podcast with your host Eleven. And my name is Winnie. And we are the gateway drug to mindfulness. And welcome, welcome back, back to another episode, episode of Discipline Stoners. Stoners. I'm your host Eleven. My name is Winnie, and, and we, we are, are the gateway, gateway drug, drug to, to mindfulness. mindfulness. And today, okay, as far as this industry and landscape being uh, like a Pokemon game, this is one of my favorite Pokemon that I continuously <laughs> see. We have um, a creator of this beautiful product here that we're going to get into. It's his first drop. Uh, he brings the most beautiful, classy touch to all the cannabis events that like we go to. And yeah, he's just like kind of a one of a kind creator True. and very important. We have Adrian Stein of Dope Cocktails. Hey. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you guys. It's great to see you. What do we got smoking on? We're smoking on <laughs> comatose. What do we got smoking on? I already started smoking it, so this will be fun. That's rolled by our homie over here, Mina. What's up? How are you? I'm pretty good. Yourself? Good. How's your life? My life is uh, my life's pretty really good, actually. Okay. Yes, it's excellent. You do a really cool I love thing. That. Thanks. So my dad was a bartender when I was growing up. So I got to watch, but you got something special. Like Thank you. Like you whip the uh, the accoutrement so, in a very presentable way. I want to dive right in. When I know. Wants to for, give those, context. for those of, of us who might not know who you are, um, I was just on the website, and I really I love the philosophy of it, but please can you give us uh, a history and let people know what who is, what is Dope Cocktails? Uh, okay, yeah. So Dope Cocktails is something that I uh, came up with in uh, – 2020 right really I started working on it in 2019 and um, <clears throat> what inspired me to do it was uh, I have a I was I have a background with addiction and uh, I was uh, I found myself addicted to opiates and uh, eventually by the end of it um, like uh, IV fentanyl right so Shit. I was uh, wow. I was in 2019 I was struggling um, and uh, this is like around the same time that the dispensaries opened up, like the legal stores. Yep. So um, I got put on methadone. I'm all right right now. Thanks. And yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I got put on methadone, and uh, and that helped me get off the fentanyl. But the methadone created like some really bad side effects. I couldn't eat. Oh fuck. Um, like I lost a ton of weight. I just was like, I also had to work because I had I was like behind, like I was behind in my bills because I was just coming off a relapse. So um, like life was tough, and so. I was I was struggling, and my doctor actually he I talked to him about it. And he said, uh, you know, like I think you should look into cannabis as a potential to help mitigate the side effects because um, it helps it's helped many of my other patients. But he was like very clear with me. He's like, I don't smoke it, like I don't use it, I don't know about it. He's like, don't ask me for a license. I'm not giving you a card. Just go to one of the stores. There's stores now. Now, like you can go go talk to a bud tender, right? Wow. Yeah. What was his apprehension <clears throat> of not wanting to give you a license? He's just like, I, he's like, I believe in it, but like, I'm not the guy to ask for the license. That's go interesting. On. But he, he was also, he's my family doctor. He is also the same doctor that was prescribing the methadone. You have to have a special like license gotcha. for that, right? So, so he'd give you like, methadone, but not weed. Yeah, because he's just like, and, and like, but he, he it's endorsed, his it was his idea for me to go check it out. He was yeah. just like, don't ask me, yeah. <laughs> go ask somebody else. Yeah. But I think it could help you, right? That's super smart. That's pretty really, smart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And pretty open-minded. If you don't know about yeah. something. Exactly. It also relieves him of any liability, I imagine. Well, that's pretty much why they're doing it, right? <laughs> right. Like that's the whole thing. That's why you can't make medical claims. That's, there's, yeah. right? there's no proof, right? Yeah. So, um, so I went to, uh to uh on queen street i think it was called nova at the time yeah i, like, I remember that one yeah and i and i went i talked to a bud tender a young lady and i told her exactly what i was using it for like i, I did not lie and she was like you know there's <coughs> other, she's like there's other people like you that have come in and i think you should look into one-to-one -one products you know the thc the cbd yeah and i was like okay and i'd never really believed in cbd before like i didn't know about it mm -hmm. i definitely was using thc already mm -hmm. but it was too much before work and like 
it was just knocking me out. I wasn't right. eating food and stuff, right? So, yeah. and I wasn't trying to get high. I was just trying to like feel better, right? So, uh, so I got a, like a one to one flower, and I, I went home and I tried it, and it was like she like hit hit it like right on the head. It was like perfect, right? Oh. And so, so then that's you know, so awesome to hear. Thank you, that bud tender. Yeah, it was it was pretty uh, it was a uh, pretty. Uh, I'm very lucky that I met that one because mm-hmm. it could have been another one, right? So bud tenders, you make a difference. Definitely, you know, and like I, you know, definitely come from the uh, legacy market with flour, but I've always, and now that I know about CBD, I will only get CBD products from, you know, pro- like authorized retailers. I don't, I don't trust it any other way. Any other yeah, place. there's just no way to, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's and like CBD is like more like medicine than, you know. Are part you part. a medical patient now? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. I mean, wow. I, I use it for those purposes, but I don't feel the need to be one. That was yeah. what I, I became one because uh, Mendo reached out to us and <clears throat> we learned he couldn't write off 2K a year Yeah, on weed. I mean, I have a business that that's in cannabis, so I can already write off some like R and D. Oh yeah, hey yo, nice. <laughs> lots of R and D. Lots of R and D. Already ahead. This is yeah. like a superpower. One of those. <laughs> okay, so your doctor recommended it. You went and got the oil, and then how? Is so this tying? yeah, and then like yeah, like so that was just one um, specific strain that was hard to get, and then I started mm-hmm. trying mm-hmm. other. Uh, it was like Warlock 417 or something like that. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, Haven Street, I think. Right, right? yeah. It was, to me, it's like one of the best weeds I've ever smoked in my life. It was oh, like my God. Perfect, nice. right? So, um, but then it ran out and I like still wanted it. So I, I started like getting like just CBD flour and um, uh, the Redican raindrops. Okay. Right? So. Oh, yeah, we got those. We like <clears throat> those drops. Stop it. And uh, so I started, because uh, like heroin's a first thing in the morning drug. Like you wake up, you need it, right? Really? So it was like just just coming off that and I was still sort of like shaky with that routine. And so I found that uh, dropping some uh, cannabis oil in my coffee and some CBD flour, like it yes. took away that that sort of like, it, it gave me a new ritual and a new routine and it also took away my desire to like get high. But then uh, in addition to that, it just made me feel like really well and like really safe and like connected. And like, I felt like I had like uh, power, you know, like mm-hmm. that I was just like, I was gonna be okay. Yes. And so, and then uh, previously I had a, like a reputation and um, a lot of experience making cocktails, but specifically non-alcoholic cocktails. Uh, I got, had a sort of like a, so one of the first guys in the city to have like a non-alcoholic cocktail list cool. back in 2011, right? You're the OG of mocktails? One of them, ah! you know, so. Yeah. Well, cause I stopped drinking alcohol uh, 15 years ago. So. Congrats. And, uh, thank, well, I mean, thank you. Yeah. So, and like I had lots of friends who don't drink and I just, you know, it was like. To me, um, you know, uh, a non-alcoholic cocktail was the same. Just take out the alcohol. It's still the same sort of like you have to put the same amount of uh, effort into it. Yeah, same potentially care, more. If not more. Exactly. Actually, it's more, yeah. It's, more. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's harder. It's harder. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You were like a godsend of like when we were like, because we love drinks and we are the bougie millennials that will pay the $8 for a cocktail. And thank at, you. At well, that, that $8 is very cheap these days. Actually, so. a <laughs> like the, Sorry. Yeah. $18. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Depending on what rooftop you're on. But uh, regardless, of like what's in it or how much it is, <clears throat> that exercise of being able to partake socially in a cocktail, but not have it be like too filled with sugar or at least filled with something beneficial and then like not have alcohol in it. And just like in the capacity of enjoying your beverages at social parties, it solved that problem for mm-hmm. me. And it's such a, it's such a consistent problem, like cause I don't like to drink alcohol, but I like to see the cool drink <laughs> and like, yeah, we like the social aspect of I, it. I like the cool drink. And like, yeah, you provided that experience. And I've never really seen it done that way. And that's super cool and important. And like, yeah. yeah. And going back to just how delicious they are, and it actually is way harder for a mocktail because if a cocktail sucks, you're like, oh, al-, like it's just, you just assume you it's the, the alcohol. gross alcohol taste, yeah. you know? <laughs> you're like, oh, they didn't do the best job of masking the alcohol. <clears throat> Whereas, like, I, you don't have that. You just have to make a delicious drink and you provide yeah. let me tell you how do you formulate your recipes well, are we, or sorry. we haven't even got to how don't oh, i'm sorry <laughs> I'm jumping the gun here. yeah <laughs> i have to keep him just hold him back no worries bit. um okay so uh you were having this okay so the, how incre- i came up with it right? incredible experience yeah so i was just like uh, i was walking with my mom and i'm like yeah i got this idea like i'm like this is i feel so good it's like 
helping me so much. This is so cool. And my like my mom, my parents are open minded to cannabis, like you know, like hippies and stuff. So like that's nice. nice. And, well, Shout yes and no because uh, you know I'm in recovery. I'm not supposed to be using weed. So you know everyone's a little shaky. Like, oh, is this okay? Is this not okay? And then we made a deal. Like, if I ever relapse again, I don't get to use cannabis. So nice. so like that's that's like the sort of like I get one chance with it, and I'm like still writing it right so um and that's and so since then it's just uh everyone's been okay with it and um and i told my mom like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna create something that's gonna help people i want to create a alternative to alcohol right because i can't really create an alternative to heroin right so yeah i had to create an alternative to alcohol and like someone who hasn't drank alcohol for years and it's also i've been a bartender so when i go see my, to restaurants people will put a mocktail in, my, in front of me like it's really nice i appreciate it but sometimes like a mocktail is not enough, you know, and also I can't drink a cocktail. So for people like myself and anyone else who who feels that way or even if you need to take a break, I wanted to create an alternative, right? And something that's like sort of in the middle, but also like because it's based around health and wellness, I wanted all the drinks to be like using like, you know, no white sugars, using on trend items like, you know, kombucha, drinking vinegars. Yeah. Whatever it might be. Something healthy, fresh ingredients, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long, so you, you told your mom you had this idea, this is marinating. How long did was it, take? yeah, did you think before sort of the first cocktail was developed? Uh, like three months, I'd say. I wow. sort of like, yeah, I started learning about it and like trying, like I had, I was huge into weed um, until I was about 30, like, 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 like say 15 years. And then I stopped using it for about ten altogether. Is was, that when you used heroin? Is yes. Through your okay. so, <laughs> so you shifted away. Yes. I exactly. went into that. Okay. And that, yes. that took But you while I was using heroin and I was trying to get clean, there was I, like you know when the, before the project Claudia raised with like, you know all the uh, stores, yeah. I had already sort of learned that cannabis was helpful. I would like take a gummy and I would be able to like stay clean for a, a night when I wouldn't be like. I noticed that cannabis yes. was helpful for me like a while ago. However. Mm. I didn't know about it and also it just like I think like learning I'm still okay thanks uh like learning you just about tell like, us yeah, yeah, yeah I'm probably yeah. gonna be good for the <laughs> okay. cool. yeah. like I use cannabis but I don't honestly I'm not like on my days off I'll I'll smoke them back to back yeah but for the most part I really I uh, practice my discipline with it so Yay. love that <laughs> yeah <You are> <laughs> let's go yeah I um, love that. So you're at that three mar month mark and you, is that you um, like really figuring out what the, the branding looks like or is that no, just you? No, no. So like, okay. so I'm like still, I'm learning about weed because like I said, I was into weed way before. Like we're talking like I stopped using it 2008, something like right. that, 2006. Yeah. So since then, you know, now it, now it's 2020, you know, it's a whole new world. There's all these different names, types, yes. strains. I got to, also I come from food and beverage. So I wanted to learn about flavors, terpenes. Like I go into stores, yeah. I see like strawberry cheesecake weed. I smoke it. I'm like, it does not taste like cheesecake. Why are they calling it this? Yeah. You know? I yeah. don't understand. But then I go find other strains that are called like orange mimosa and it tastes like oranges. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I Sometimes need to. Sometimes we learned that sidebar that they just have to call it something different because there's too many of like what it actually what it is. is. Well, that's, <laughs> but I wanted to learn why and why are they what naming the terps, this? And yeah. like also, yeah. And I, like I said, cause, um, like I didn't want to just come out and like make mocktails and drop some tincture into it. There had yeah. to be some sort of like theory behind it. It had to be cool. It had to be innovative. It had to be like researched, right? So that I could go out and be like, yo, check this out, you know? Yeah. So um, so I started learning and then... Um, Limonene car cardial? Cordial, yeah. This this is like a couple years later, this product. I know. But, um, yeah, we're not here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to drink I'm some. <laughs> yeah, you Continue. can. Go I will. for it, yeah. Um, so then, uh, yeah, so like, let's say I came up with the idea in like June and then September I started, I put like pen to paper and I started like coming up with like, first drinks were like milk and cookies and then like uh, diesel sour, like I said, you know, like, like it's like a whiskey sour, right? Yeah. And so um, I just started, I really wanted them to be like really cocktailed, right? Like, so, um, and then uh, a gentleman who I'd worked with who was like a professional events planner, um, I had, uh, he uh, used to throw big drink festivals. I, I approached him and I was like, I got this idea and you're the guy that I'm going to throw an event with. Fuck yeah. And he's like, that's what he said. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. He's like, thank you for bringing this to me. He's like, absolutely, we're going to do this together, it's right? A great idea. So I had never really put together an event before <coughs> and it's like, we're all super excited. And uh, yeah, we just started building it out. Uh, no branding. And that was a big misstep. Right. I learned that. 
And so we did this event uh, February 2020. And, uh, you know, we learned about how, like, in the cannabis space, you can't, like, boost ads on social media. Yeah. And then <coughs> even brands like uh, Fever Tree Tonic didn't want to line up with us because it's not, like, cannabis isn't, like, globally legal. Yeah. So they can't, like, so sponsorship was difficult. So, you know, like, it, we, we ended up selling, like, uh, you know, three quarters of the tickets last minute. It was a push. Dropped the price a bit. We made it, you know, it was a learning experience. Whew, and good job. Got to thug it out sometimes. That's so, yeah, dense. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but like, you know, um, and then and then we made an impression and I met a bunch of people and uh, booked some events for, let's say, maybe two months. And then three weeks later was COVID, right? Fuck. And I was like, see ya. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> right? Get into the events industry early I 2020. It. I was like, well, that was a good idea. Well, I guess next idea, Dope Cocktails <laughs> is dead, right? So, Fuck. Uh, no, but then um, actually a friend of mine, so that's Dope Cocktails. And then a friend of mine who uh, was in real estate, personal training, restaurant, he got shut down. He's like, I need a side hustle. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's, he's like, because everyone was asking me for drinks now, right? And it was just too difficult. So I was like, let's put together some products for people to make their own drinks with, right? Fuck yeah. So we started an, another line, it was called Cannabis Elixirs, and we started selling syrups, oil, syrups and oils, these, these the, the OGs of these, right? Oh. And uh, it took six weeks before I had a meeting with um, the CEO of uh, Wink, the LP back then. It was like, yeah. I, got, hey. I got lined up with Charles Caboose, uh, you know, uh, hospitality icon, and he, he was super into the idea. He's like, let's go, let's take these products. Oh. to market and uh and then i i met up with uh the lady at the uh, lp and she was just like no too soon what? it's not gonna work out like what? stay okay. stay in the gray area learn <sighs> about your brand you're gonna make money there you're oh. not gonna make money here oh it's too regulated here and like it was really good advice yeah. I was kind of, it, was, it was hard to hear but it was like she was yeah. she was really it was correct sometimes you wow. need that yeah, <laughs> yeah well. i mean yeah so and then um and then you know because it was like COVID for a while, I ended up turning dope cocktails into an Instagram account. Yeah. And uh, and because I come from like alcohol, yeah. Uh, as a bartender, like you get attraction like by flirting with brands. So I started like putting together drinks using other people's brands, and I picked them based on like flavors or the color of their packaging or the branding or yeah. their names or whatever. Yeah. And then so I just started like doing my thing with drinks. Yeah. And then um, COVID wrapped up, and I started uh, being able to do pop ups and. Uh, I started putting like color coding the setup, refining it, refining it. Um, started I was starting to work with some LPs and retailers and like starting to get some traction. And then I had an opportunity to, to do some uh, work in New York City last year. <coughs> Let's go. So I did like 15 events in. Because uh, New and York is open now. It was just opening. It was it. just open. And I got there in April and I was like, I get there and like there's nobody in New York City who has a branded cocktail thing. And I'm like, holy shit, it's this so is crazy, rare across right? the board. Yeah, and like they loved it. They really like food and beverage there. Yeah. Right? So um, I almost moved there because of it. I'm an American citizen. Oh, really? My mom yeah. comes from New York. I've always wanted to go to New York. Like that's why I went to New York because it was always my dream to like do things in New York. Fuck. Yeah. And New so, York is a shit. I could definitely yeah. see you killing which, it in New York. Which ties into the branding. So um, the original branding, uh, the designer sat me down. Like he was just like, tell me about yourself. Tell me about the brand. And like I'm um, 44, I uh, grew up listening to hip hop. My mom comes from New York, I'm a big sneakerhead. So he uh, he did a rip of the Nervous Records logo, like, uh, like um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Um, and uh, and this is uh, inspired by the C Club CBGB font. Right? Yes. And so he was like, there you go, here's your New York hip hop branding, hey. right? And so I go to New York and I start doing events there, except Nervous Records is now an events company in Brooklyn where I'm doing events. Oh my God. And they find, they see my logo. Oh no. And so they give me a cease and desist. Right? Oh fuck. And uh, we had always joked around, like when we when we first dropped, he goes, listen, he goes, if, if you get a cease and desist, I'll give you half price on the rebrand. Cause that means we're like, we're getting somewhere, right? Hey. So I called them up, I'm like, hey, uh, I'm gonna have to cash in on that offer. Right? <laughs> it's time, right? Yeah. And so. And we're back. And we're back. Um, okay. So we were at New York. Yeah, yeah uh, the rebrand. Yeah. So, yeah, so I have to rebrand. And so, basically, the guys at Nervous, uh, I got to say, like, I totally saw their point. And I was like, because at first when they approached, they, they were messaging me over. I didn't get an official cease and desist. I got Instagrammed. And then they were like, we're going to give you a cease and desist yeah. if you don't stop. Yeah. So, I was, like, messaging the guy. I'm like, listen, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, I'm, like, a gray market brand in Canada. Like, mm, like, maybe I won't stop. And he's like... Well, you're just taking someone else's work, and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm done. I don't want it. Now, the way you said that, 
you're right. I don't want to do that. So he says, because oh. uh, I just, if someone did that to me, I'd be so mad, right? Yeah. Like, as soon as he said, I'm like, 100%, I won't do that. And he was oh. cool. He was like, listen, you need to change the Instagram avatar immediately. And like, uh, don't print any more things, but you can like use up the rest of your oh, stickers. Nice. I already had menus. I was on my way to New York pretty much for the next event. Fuck. You can use your menus. Like, don't hang your banner. I did, but I, I put like a you know bar over the eyes, like <laughs> just to sort of like, it's like I have no sign, right? So, oh, nice. And, um, and so, yeah, I used up the stickers. And then, so I called up my designer. I was like, I'm going to need a rebrand. And he's just like, I'm really sorry, but I'm like so busy right now. I can't do it. So I was following a guy on Instagram who did really cool like cartoon sketching. And I just reached yes. out to him. I'm like, this is my story. This is my brand. This is what happened. Can you help me? He was just like, yes. You know, so, uh, so we, we connected. He's like based in Southern California. I've never seen what he looks like. Oh. And uh, yes. he sent me a couple of ideas, and I was just like, man, like they were all good. You know, it was like hard to pick. Cool. So, and then like we had plans to do, uh, I mean, we still might, but like to do like special edition ones, like change the face for like Halloween and Christmas. And, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, but he did. I, I was like, I ended up being like happier with this than the original one. So it worked huh. out. Yeah. Isn't that and so? And I have two logos now because of as a result, right? So, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting sometimes when something happens that is like perceivably bad in the moment, but like ultimately it leads to things that are like really good. It's just been the journey as an entrepreneur, as like understanding that like sometimes the level up isn't by choice, but it's like really good. You know, yeah. it's like necessary. It yeah. comes when it comes, you know? Well said. You know, we don't get to choose it, but when it comes, it's just like we get through it and it's just like, this is way better. You know? yeah. And it is a level up because it is like life putting on more weight racks to your bench press. Yeah. It's like, how are you going to get the gains unless it gets a little heavier? And then it can exactly. feel like overwhelming in the beginning. So, yeah, you did face some adversity then in like sort of getting this off the ground, especially with the COVID. Um, so, like, what? Yeah, why keep going? Yeah, why Why didn't you just drop crazy it? crazy guy. Um, you keep well, going. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to a bunch of times. And uh, like I said, I almost moved to New York. So I was I was on my way. Like I was looking for places with a friend. But like at the same time, I started booking things in Toronto yeah. out of the blue. Mm. It was like, mm. I was just like, that's interesting. Right? And uh, and then New York didn't wasn't so easy. I had some issues down there. I had got into a dispute with uh, somebody I was working with. I found myself uh, getting arrested for something I didn't do. It was like this whole thing. Fuck. So I'm like, I'm going to stay away from New York for a bit. Life. It all got worked out in the end. Good. And uh, but let me tell you, do not get yourself arrested in New York. It's crazy there. So that's definitely <laughs> something you don't want. Oh yeah. Not a cool place to be arrested. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh bro. Shit. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so I'm not going to back to New York for a while. I'm going to focus on Ontario again. And then that was like the fall. And then just things started sort of popping off. Like they are now. How about your boy? Yeah, exactly. We out here. We place that intentionally in there, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> That's not even a siren. That's just a little button I pressed. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, and so just like, just, yeah, just, I kept on going. Oh, sorry. So then with the products. So um, I had uh, like a, another gentleman, like on, entrepreneur uh, ca in the cannabis world who also, manu uh, basically a manufacturer of products. This guy had been following me from day one, dope cocktails, the can of boost elixirs, mm. the Instagram, all this stuff. He also, um, he's an owner of a beverage, so I'm not going to say which one, but like, so he, I created some Instagram content for his company and he got back to me. He was like, that was so good. We love it so much. Would you like to take products to the market yourself? And I was like, well, I'm not really like set up to do that. He's like, we'll take care of the funding. You're going to bring the, uh, intellectual property and bring the branding the marketing you're gonna do your thing just keep doing your thing we'll take care of the rest right yes i love that person <clears throat> yeah so do i shout out that person <laughs> bet you do yeah <laughs> good so... man you deserve it though you were on the move you're on the hustle you were focused you're a perfect candidate to partner with yeah and so so the original thing he asked if if i wanted to do is like um flavored powders and i was like not really keen on that because personally like i couldn't see how i could make it better than kool-aid right and like Kool-Aid's already not that good. So, <laughs> yeah. so then he's like, well, what about syrups? And, I'm, and I was already doing these like gray market syrups and I wanted to level them up. I want to use like minor cannabinoids in them and terpenes and like yes. I wanted to make them fast acting, but like I can't do that in my kitchen at home. Right. So, um, so he was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, we can do syrups. Why not? Know? Why? What's the, uh, what's holding you back? Well, Is like just the, or... well, like the, the, the technology, the, okay. the equipment, you know, like the, 
like I I funded all my stuff personally. You can take it, you can make it good enough, but yeah. you can't take it like. Yeah. Eventually, you need proper equipment. So this is incredible. This limonene <clears throat> cordial sativa syrup. Like, is that? Are we getting warm to this story? This part of the story yet? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, so we'll talk about the syrup. So it's yeah, incredible. so then I they were like, let's let's make some syrups. So I had, uh, so I, I basically took my original skews from the gray market and I just like revamped them. So, and uh, so you got to be fully hands on yes. with that. And it happened really fast. Um, where the point to the point where it was like I got the call and it was like oh, you, we'll need the uh, the products and recipes by tomorrow. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> How many did you have? Well, I had none, right? Like, <laughs> but he had a lot. Though, it was like 11 p.m. I just got home from work and I'm like, I you read the email. I'm like, oh, you need this for tomorrow morning. I have to invent oh, four products God. for the retail space. Okay, okay. Oh so gosh. I just took my original ones and I'd already been working on some ideas, obviously, right? And then um, I wanted to make them all like. I like to have like fun with like whimsical names. If you know my cocktails, I think it's part of, part of the experience. So true. So I wanted to like make all of them like sort of like plays on bar products. I just couldn't not think of it. So the limonene cordial is a take on lime cordial, obviously, yeah. right? And that's a very popular, well-known, non-alcoholic bar ingredient. And so it just made sense. And so to me, that was going to be the hero ingredient plus the color of the brandings matching my, like with the packaging match, matches my logo, right? Yes. So. And that was the one that I thought uh, was the coolest in my in terms of all the syrups. Yeah. So what it is is uh, it's organic cane sugar, um, uh, limonene terpenes from chewed terpenes, um, and then uh, a little bit of vegetable glycerin to emulsify the terps, and then fast acting cannabis, and that's it. There's nothing. There's no chemicals. Nothing. And it's uh, it's, half, it's a teaspoon. So it's um, basically designed that you can. It's it works in anything unsweetened but works with things that are lightly sweet, sweet, sweetened already right beautiful mm -hmm. i just put it in kombucha and it is amazing <gasps> thank you thank that you. is amazing that tastes so fucking good with kombucha that's crazy that's the drink mm. that's the drink and it's the one-to-one -one. one to one exactly so this is like that so classic again, joint you smoked and you were like all, mm -hmm. i um like i'm trying to stay true to like what brought me here we talk like mm -hmm. talk about intention i'm not here to get people high Right, yep. I'm here to get people, get people, get help people feel better, mm. take the edge off. You yes. know, um, they're 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 ten milligrams each because I want value, I want effect. Yep. You know, and like if you don't want the full ten milligrams, just pour a little bit less of the syrup. Hello. Right, but uh, for those of us who do want it, then um, but yeah, I think the the, the the CBD is important in there. Oh, it totally is. I love the balance, the way that they act together in the harmony. Is this the exact package that gets to yes. be sold? So people yes. get in the store. It's so cool. Oh, I and love, such a nice I love your gifts. little... <clears throat> We're there, the next round is going to be a little bit smaller. They're going to be... Uh, Great. These packages. Okay. So, you go size. When you go nice. to dinner, though, you can bring these. If you don't want to drink and you go to dinner, right? stop by a cannabis retail store ask for the dope cocktails yeah, this is a game changer well that's syrup and then you just like any drink they give you or you bring you sparkling get water is what i for that product Hello. like so you can even if you take it out of the packaging and it's right? a gift you it's can, a nice gift buy gives, four i brought it to a super fancy restaurant in montreal i brought a yes. couple of them for myself right yeah like having a nice beautiful meal but i don't want a cocktail yeah glass of sparkling water and a wine glass Hello. I, it was great <laughs> i love so that. great yeah. i love that yeah Fuck yeah. That's, That's great. Congratulations. Game game so is this the only flavor that you have on the market right now? Um, no. So that one is, uh, that's the sativa syrup. And then I have uh, one called Sweet Dream Syrup. Mm -hmm. So I guess I guess people get a little confused with it. It's a, it's a hybrid syrup. It's not me like meant to make you feel tired. It's like Sweet Dream because it's Blue Dream and it's sweet, right? So uh, yeah, Like a so, sweet dream, like exactly. a fun dream. Yeah, it's not Sweet Dreams, right? So yeah. So that's the... <laughs> So, okay, yeah. uh, but it seems to be the number one selling from what I've seen, like the, out of all of them. Um, and that's like baby blue packaging. And that's Demerara sugar, which is like a earthy sort of um, more flavorful, natural sugar that comes from like usually the Caribbean, something like that. Oh. They also make rum out of it. And so um, I, I had uh, an agave syrup and a rum, uh, Demerara sugar syrup. And I was sort of like pairing them with drinks that would traditionally call for like rum or tequila. So this way it's sort of like, you're using like the ingredients that they make the spirits out of in the drinks yes. so that there's still going to be like a sort of like a natural pairing, right? Yeah. Just makes sense. So then I use sort of like, the, so the sweet dream syrup is for drinks like 
if you want to make your non-alcoholic mojitos, margaritas, whatever cocktails, you know, um, that's the perfect one. And that's so that's um, two to one THC CBD. It's a little less CBD because I I wanted it to be more of like a cocktail experience. Get a little high, you know? Yeah. 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 So, but also like, I think you want to have a couple of them too. You don't want to get too high. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I know people who are drinking drinks are usually having a couple of joints or at least one with it. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. totally. You had jobs at restaurants then. You worked the bar at restaurants or bars or, but then you slowly made a transition into uh, renting your services out as an entrepreneur and by servicing like an un, untapped gap in the market. So can I hear a little bit, I know this kind of takes us back, like from, we just had, okay. we just rode this train to here and go get that product. But <clears throat> I'm always so fascinated with the transition time between being an employee and being an entrepreneur. And it doesn't happen overnight. And often you use time gaps in your job to build something in your head or or you're learning applicable skills. That's another one, like you definitely were. But yeah, can can you talk a little bit about that transition or like working in restaurants or what that gave you? Yeah, sure. Uh, So started working in, um, started working in hospitality in 1992. And I started at McDonald's. Let's so, go! At, at, <laughs> yes, at the Eaton Center do. Food Court. Food, yeah, Eaton Center Food Court. So, <clears throat> it was like one of the busiest ones in Canada. Fuck. And uh, I got the job through a um, family friend. <clears throat> so I was actually like working illegally. I was like too young to be, but they let me be there. <laughs> and I was only allowed to work the cash. That's where, like, I was the only male. It was all females. And like the, the dudes were in the back flipping burgers, which is what I wanted to do. <clears throat> but I wasn't allowed to. Yeah. So, um, and because I was young, like I got paid like fuck, 6.25 an hour, something like that, it was nothing. And I was yeah. only allowed to work three hour shifts. So I'm going into work, make 20 bucks a day. Like, <laughs> oh, it's a joke, right? Oh, <laughs> Not even, no. but like my parents wanted me to work and like whatever, I'm like learning. <laughs> <clears throat> so it was What's like- the monthly? You're like, I made 200 bucks. Month, my two week paychecks were like $65. It was, <laughs> it was, it was like, <laughs> it was, that was it, you know? Sounds like uh, so, paper route money. <laughs> but like, whatever. It was fun. I was down by the Ian Center, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah right? You were doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Got free chicken nuggets, right? So, <laughs> Sick. Yeah, it's a score. Yeah. So um, so because it's so in those like three hours I'd work, we, I would serve like 400 to 500 people. It was a lot. It was Whoa. very busy. And uh, the people I was working with, they were not having slackers there. So they like sort of took me under their wing. They were like, you know, maybe 10 years older than me. And they just were like, you're going to do what we do. And like taught me to work very organized, right? Very efficiently. Nice. Uh, yes. That's, that's a great skill at it's, such a young age. I, it's, what, it's, it's everything to what to today, right? It's like, it gave me the foundation, so. Um, Shout out McDonald's. Yeah. We were watching the Ray Kroc thing last night, yeah. and that is efficiency. My training fun. video was 40 hours hosted by Michael Jordan, which was pretty cool, because <laughs> I was big into Jordan, right? So I was like, but they take it seriously. Yeah, wow. The right they paid that man. That definitely. Um, so, yeah, 40 that, hours did you watch that over the course of like two weeks i like, came in like five days in a row for like it was like i don't oh, like it was man. like my job for a week you know yeah maybe it wasn't 40 hours or it was 20 hours it was something like that yeah. right? but like um so then like moving forward uh, at the end of high school um i decided i was going to take a year off between high school and university and um um again through like family f- friend that got a job at a really busy espresso bar in Yorkville. Yeah. Uh, it was called, uh, it was a company called Letieri's. It was really popular mm. late nineties in Toronto. It was like OG espresso place in Toronto that had like the best coffee. It was before all the- That artisanal. place, like the open place? Like it was just a small place? It was uh, right at the corner of Bel Air and Cumberland. It was quite big. It would be open till five, six in the morning. Like oh, wow. Mm-hmm. There was like, there was still the jazz festival in Yorkville. Oh, wow. celebrities would pull up it was a place to be it was like really it was a very like euro how old are you i was uh started when i was eight i turned like right before i turned 19 yeah right so Sick. i uh, did fine dining when i was like 16 17. no this wasn't fine dining this no. was like a, this was like a busy like european style like like really busy espresso but the bar. area very, was like high end the area was high end and like right? luxury luxury and people had money to very spend. much so yeah it was like yeah and so but i got really it's into it it's um, good to get that culture yeah, like it just like it was really cool to be around, you yeah. know. <laughs> Started off as a dishwasher or like glass washer or whatever, but then within like two months, I was already like, um, you know, bartender, right? And the way I became the bartender was, I started making like <coughs> fresh juices. They had like a juice. It was very like it was a very ahead of its time. Like it, they had fresh juices. They had drinks made with ice cream. Drinks made with syrups. It was like 
all kinds of drinks. Like drink list was like 80 drinks. It was crazy, right? So, and the way, like the sort of like the hierarchy there was like the head honcho was the barista and the yeah. bartender was under that. And then there was like the juice guy, you know, and like the ice cream scooper and like the sandwich oh, press, like, shit. right? So uh, one day the bartender guy didn't show up and he's like, who wants to do that? I stepped up to the plate and I just like got into it right away. Nice. And uh, yeah, and then that's how I sort of got into bartending, right? Yeah. Wow. And I just took it on. I like really, really enjoyed it and I wanted to make the drinks look pretty. And then a um, few years later, I got scouted at the same place. Uh, there was an Italian restaurant being built. This is like 1998, 99. Yo. And I was making coffees for these two guys and uh, one guy calls me over. He's like, you know, you make really good coffee. Like, oh, thanks. He's like, I like you. He's like, you're looking for a job? And I was like, not really, but maybe. <laughs> and so it was uh, an, an Italian restaurant down the street and... Um, and I went to go see the owner and the owner basically hired me on the spot and I'm still attached to them today. I still work with them. And like, Aww. so, and this place that's called Dimi in Yorkville, uh, it ended up being like super busy, like super popular restaurant. Fuck yeah. I worked there, like, like I said, on and off for many years. And I just like, uh, eventually I went towards other styles of restaurants and we like, you know, I went and spread my wings. Yeah. And, got to. Uh, and I continued the Italian vibe the whole, almost my whole career. Yes. And I ended up, uh, I worked with um, uh, operator, uh, like the gentleman who owns uh, Julieta and Julia mm. now, Dave Minacucci. He was like my, he, he took me under his wing and taught me how to like elevate in my mixology. Yo. And then I worked uh, with uh, Chef Massimo Capra at his restaurant called Mistura. And uh, there it was like, it was, it, I was already good at mixing drinks, but then it was about refined service attention to detail we threw a lot of corporate events yes right and so it was like there was no there was no fucking around there was no that. room for error no no you know like and like we had like the top top people and good like celebrities um government people like very <laughs> like very serious yeah top 10 uh, i know this Canada. shit i worked at chipino's in cool. vancouver and there you go. Pino Pasta there. yeah exactly very fucking serious well, i believe that chef used to work with the my former bosses at another restaurant yeah yeah and so, they're all they all know each other yeah they're all, celebrity chefs top chefs Intense. yeah but no the, I, I wouldn't last a second no. in that kitchen <laughs> no you got it it's very <laughs> tense but if you get into a flow with it and you just respect that you're seeing like a master with a vision at work and you're playing a role with it you can really get into a nice flow yeah. yourself and i've seen like specifically cooks and like really good bartenders like i think be pretty fulfilled at fine dining restaurant because it's like top level like top it's level. about the execution yeah it's, it's about blowing their mind and there's budget like yes. and you get to use like the nicest ingredients I've yes god bless use some budget. crazy stuff you know <laughs> yes. like yeah what, so, what have been some cool unique stuff that you've used i don't know, like fresh white truffle like you yes. know, just grab a 400 hundred dollar truffle start using you know like that kind of thing <laughs> so, i mean that didn't happen often but uh Pretty much, I don't know, like uh, you 50, put 50 year old balsamic vinegar. Oh, you know yes. that that type of thing. Oh, you know, wow. like or esoteric ingredients, but really high end spirits, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, liqueurs. Yeah, you you you've dialed in on the terps and the and the taste feeling of the drink so well, and the presentation. You put the flowers in. Yeah, like, so the flowers obviously is um, you know to represent cannabis, right? Yeah, but also mm -hmm. I I happen to really like flowers and colors and. I'm a big sneakerhead, which I think is all part of it. So I'm good, thanks. Um, yeah, and like, you know, like I was saying, without alcohol, like when I designed the dope cocktails, I thought, I'm like, there's no booze. That means I have to literally bring everything else, you know? Yeah. Like the, the, the straws with intention, the color yes. of the cups with intention, Yes. all the ingredient, like all the garnishes. I keep the drinks like for the pop-ups, like I try and keep the flavors like fun and, and original, but same time, like not too, complicated yeah and i make it more about the look and overall like setup as you guys see right yes because it has to be executable and sometimes i pop up in the middle of nowhere you know and like yeah i don't want to get myself into any situations where I, it's it can't still be great you know yeah so and then i i feel that from your setup i i i'm so glad that you walked us through that journey because i'm like you had to have had some like extensive like time and like training with like high level food and beverage pros because you don't just get that from like a school, you get that from like your tight butthole because the chef's yelling, like you better do it right. <laughs> like yeah. it's like the military. Like well, you get the fucking. My mentor is <laughs> insane with that stuff. And like, <laughs> you should he, do he would perfect. come talk to me and just be like, hey, how's your day? And start like feeling under the bar, just talking to me, you know, like 
but he's not talking to me. He's checking to see if I've cleaned under the, you know, like yeah. covert ops, yeah. you know, just like it starts awesome. feeling the top. Oh yeah, you feel it okay, you know, just like and and go into like the last wine glass up that you'd never exactly. actually use and just checking that and being like, oh, is that what we're calling clean? Like just like no, no, no. Shit and like during that. when it's busy too, it can't get dirty, right? So yeah. that's that's all part of it. And uh, but also like other bartenders, they have their styles. Yeah. Some people, you know, they juggle things. Some people light things on fire. You know, for me, um, I because I come from a very organized environment, I felt that's what I had to bring to the table. It's right? a beautiful so, representation of cannabis too. Like it's it's just like clear. Well, that's, yeah, and that was classy. the other intention. Was like I wanted it to be like not too weedy, right? So yes. still like fun and like so like the, I I try and use green, purple, and pink, the colors of cannabis, right, as much as possible, and um, and like I name the drinks after that, and I use food friendly terps. Like I don't use terps like gas mask to me that doesn't sound appetizing no. like, you know like some sort of uh you know fruit flavored like one more. right yeah. yeah like watermelon kush sounds much tastier than gas mask to me so. yeah. yeah have you ever have you ever put runts on a runt strain you know no, no but you, you, i mean see what yeah. i mean <laughs> there's so That's many yeah, there's it's, delicious it's, sounding ones it's the the strains you know make the drinks so easy right so if you're listening that way that creative intuitive way sounds like you've always kind of been like that looked at life through the lens almost as an artist like creative uh, intuitive or would you say you're more logistic and planned um i would say maybe a little bit of both like, of course yeah. beautiful balance <laughs> of course that's yeah. great that's really great because often there's like i'm definitely in like the creative circle well like when i create the the drinks like um I, like i need i need like a starting point and then usually i just um it takes a it takes like a a few weeks for it to fully evolve you know it starts off with an idea and like you yeah know, so but, it comes from inspiration so you think of another drink and you yeah oh it. yeah we were we were talking about how i um how i switched over to my to my from like employment to yeah yeah situation sorry, yeah, i'll sorry. talk about the inspiration of the drinks too but yeah basically I, I started uh in 2008 i won this big cocktail competition there wasn't many cocktail competitions back then because mixology wasn't that big but i won it and uh part of the prize is they put me in the paper as toronto's best bartender I'm not saying that I was. I just got called that, right? You proved, you proved <laughs> so, it. Don't be so humble. You proved it. This is Toronto's best bartender. So as a result, I started getting a lot of people reaching out to me to do private parties for them, right? Yes. And so I, I've been doing them for, since that long. And then... How did you catch those people or how did they find you? In uh, the they, paper, they put your Yeah, contact? they would call the restaurant because the restaurant put where I, where I mm. work. So they would contact the restaurant. Oh. Or like, yeah, pretty much And they're that. just like... Facebook. Right? This guy, this employee's becoming a celebrity in yes. this field. We gotta let him fulfill his. I mean, not to say yes, but like you know, there was like these Visa Infinite series dinners where they they would like they would sell tickets for famous chefs. Yeah, I actually ended up on a couple of those with the chef. Like it was yes. Chef Massimo Capra with mixologist Adrian Stein. I'm like, this is crazy. You know, I'm yes. part of the part of the cell, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my so, god, I love that. And like, but like, and yeah, it became a thing. Like, it I mean, it definitely got to my head at the time, right? But mm -hmm. it's gonna <clears> feel valued. It's it's nice. It, it, it was nice, but except it's the same time that my addiction also was like taking over. So it was like at the same time, like oh really? So it was like two worlds. But uh, yeah. Wow. Um. So at that time, you were doing it. Was, this was the cannabis. No, no, no. This was so, just so, you were so, bartending. Two, so yeah. So it was from 2008. Yeah. Until you were just that. Until 2020, when I decided, to, or 2019, when I decided to go self-employment, I've been doing private events, and uh, it's just something I've always, even when I was unwell. I always got contacted. I was always able to execute them. Yes. It was always sort of like this thing I had in my back pocket. Like yes. I wouldn't know how to pay my rent and all of a sudden I'd open my email to event inquiries, bam, you know, it was perfect. And so we feel, yeah. So yeah. right around the same time that I was writing the recipe, right before I started writing the recipes <clears throat> here, yeah. for dope cocktails, I got asked to do a private event, a big wedding. And, uh, I made 10k off of it in Let's a weekend, go. right? And that's so, it. That's the move. And I was like, <clears throat> and I was also working in a restaurant at the time and I'm like, okay, 10k over a weekend it was a sh lot of work yeah but if yeah. i get it like always is. if i get one a month i can live a okay life you know good yeah. life right yeah so um i'm like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna now because of this event i'm gonna now start a company to i'm gonna brand myself and i'm gonna start an events company or at least not so much an events company but i want my company is called dna drink solutions yeah so it was like i want to offer solutions to all liquids that drink that was like my I love that. first slogan right and it's just sort of like because that's what i did in restaurants people 
to run out of this ingredient, what can we do? Or this doesn't work, what can we do? Or how do we do this? Or how can we execute this event? Or yeah. you know, I was always coming up with the solutions. Right? Yeah. So, so you refined the talent already, but you started to take the branding and the business more serious to have legs to stand on as something well, so the, when you got some recognition. Because uh, we talk about that. It's it's easy to say, I believe blindly, and that's true. And you got to work on manifesting like that to put yourself in that feeling state. It's just but the my next name, my name was, 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 was mud. My, my, my name was dirt, right? So, like, I, I'm like, I'm the heroin bartender. I'm the guy who's like, I'm the guy who's like got talent, but also got all this baggage, right? And I have to. Oh, people knew. Oh, people knew. <laughs> oh, okay. It was no secret, you know? Like, it's a small city, so. Yeah, but then, uh, but then you, you. You did get the recognition in your field before you started to take it seriously and brand. Oh yourself. no, no, no! I started off good, and then I, and then I, and then I went away, and then I came back, and everybody gave me a second chance, and then I fell off again, Word. and I came back, and afterwards, everyone's just like, "Forget this guy," right? Mm. That's the way it felt, at least it seemed. I became irrelevant. Plus, by this time, I'm an old guy. There's new bartenders. There's more relevant people. Mm. You know, people don't care about me anymore. So, well, dope yeah. cocktails was. I'm like, okay. How am I going to start a bartending company when I'm like a, a washed up bartender? Dope cock. I'm like I'm going to start. I'm going to launch dope cocktails at the same time, <laughs> right? So that was they were all like at the same. That was the whole thing. It was like I'm going to drop dope cocktails and launch my company at the same time, make an impression and be like the non-alcoholic bartenders back, but in a different way this time. Right? Let's go. And that was like a personal goal. It was kind of like just be like, yeah, I'm going to do this for myself. I'm going to earn back my reputation. And you are, which I believe I've done with most people. The oh. people that I care about, I have. Yeah. beautiful oh that's so mm. good to hear yeah oh and also i needed to separate myself from the other people so um and then like i prefer to work with non like non-alcoholic drinks whether it's with cannabis or not like it's a nicer experience right for myself and also n not drunk people being around well that's my point <laughs> <laughs> like bro it's just like mm. i know like my buddy sent me this thing about the history of alcohol in humans and how it's done more good than than not when used in the right way in food and trusted company and small dosages like beer and wine. Um, but it certainly reveals, like most of the time when abused, it reveals a side of people that's super unfavorable. And not, I'm not trying to put anyone down, yeah. but as opposed to like high people in my personal taste, I'm just going through a journey right now in my life where that's more cohesive to my wants in an experience is like, I'm cool with like just a moment of silence as opposed to like bursting laughter and grabbing my arm like <laughs> and that's fun too and there's a time for that too exactly. at like a baseball game <laughs> but as far as like chilling and enjoying myself and having any meaningful conversation yeah it's it can be really wearing yeah so I agree I see what you're saying no but like I'm not against alcohol I make no. a living selling it like, no I'm not and, against and not everybody's like like some people are still very nice with it so it's just it's nice to have a break from it it's nice to have an alternative right and yeah. there's so many work. people who are fucking so cool with it yeah my buddy Tav <laughs> he will sit there and drink scotch and just be a-okay he's yeah. a boss man he's okay with himself yeah I mean <coughs> that's the thing exactly so um, <coughs> but like it's also nice considering my lifestyle and like my, my history to be able to like turn my um, sort of like goals and like and lifestyle into like part of my business model like I'm also giving back at the same time where I can yeah. I've done a lot of uh, work non-alcoholic work um, even like um, at no cost with organizations to help people learn how to socialize without alcohol buy the cocktails you know and like uh i did something with she walks canada where we had uh 12 women that were either sober curious or new to sobriety that wanted to learn how to socialize with that. and i went in non-cannabis right nice. and then since then about half of them reached out to me and was like we use cannabis you know <laughs> yeah. what's, what's the name of your cannabis page you know yeah. and like it's cool like so like it just shows you that my goal and my intent there's people out there that wanted this you know Definitely. And so like that's all that matters it's to me so whether needed. i make money off it or not it's so needed no yeah. it feels great so and like obviously we we want you to make money <coughs> but oh, we want everyone <laughs> in Believe the industry everyone agrees that's, with that. yeah we want we want us to start seeing people make money but if for for like for you and what does the future of cannabis look like? Mm -hmm. Like, what's an ideal future for legal cannabis? Is it consumption lounges that can like serve this? What does airports? Airports. This should personally be like. I wanted to. I like. I'll just. I'm not like my sort of 
goal and plan is I want to open a dope cocktails cafe, but like soon yes. and, like, oh, and use like uh, things like um, hemp oil and like functional mushroom. Basically do oh. do mushroom and, and plants now and yes. be in a position to adapt when it comes, right? Yes. Yeah. And even if it doesn't come, at least do it to the best of our ability. Yeah. And so like that's sort of like what I want to work towards next is dope cocktails cafe. And that's why I can do drinks, I can do smoothies, I can do muffins salad dressings, whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, there's a place There's a place in New York uh, called Stone Pizza. There's a Pizza Pusha, if you, I'm not sure if you know about him, but he does mm -hmm. a full Italian restaurant experience. I, I've like infused, really cool. Oh. And then there's um, Cafe Canal on Canal Street. They do um, yeah. like hemp-based pastries and coffees and stuff, mm. right? So like, <clears throat> that's what I'd like to do. That would be the ideal future. Awesome. Yeah. That's that's, I think that's closer than we think. I, I don't know, but I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've already been like, you know, not full on working on it, but I'm working on it like yeah. in the background. Like that's sort of like yeah. the dream. It's percolating. And in the, in the meantime, I'd like to continue to like evolve with the products and like innovation there. I got some pretty cool ideas and mm. maybe some events here and there. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Would you, just where you're at now, would you have like a couple staples that are always available and then like seasonal, you know? flavors um, potentially depends in like what market like ontario it's difficult I think, yeah. to, to do that <clears throat> but i think it would be less about like drinks and more about products and ingredients mm. maybe a few drinks um i have a few ideas for flavor profiles but i don't think i'd really come up with anything that people aren't already doing just mm. be different flavors <laughs> you'd yeah. rather just create the raw products for people. like bar ingredients so, like infused maraschino cherries like yeah. you know, like something like that oh, like, oh, like that's that kind brilliant. of so yeah <clears throat> that's yeah. smart so you're giving people the tools to make, make your own, own drinks yeah. like that's what i like i'm like yes. dope cocktails dope mocktails right yes. so i'm a bartender that's my vibe like you know really like i said there's already some there's like, there's big com beverage companies out there with way bigger budgets than me that i cannot compete with right so like it's a small category already. So, I mean, there's, I designed, um, I designed two flavor profiles for a drink company in Colorado uh, called Trojan Horse. And uh, cool. they won an award with them at uh, some expo and they go crazy. Apparently they sell really well. Sick. So I would like to take a variation of those and bring them here. Mm. They're like lightly flavored, like lightly sweetened sodas, basically. Nice. Seltzers, but like cool flavors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The bev bevy industry right now is just chocked full of sugar. Yeah, we really it's need nuts. some some uh, yeah. some innovation. I was in I way. there was a couple non sugar options that have dropped off in like the last six months, and I completely have stopped buying beverages yeah, since then. Like, like proper, <laughs> they were real good for me for like water. what I do because I'm like cocktails i'm not like i'm not like uh coca-cola i'm not making a drink i'm yeah. like i i'm into cocktails and when you make a cocktail you need sugar like you can't avoid it like Fair. you want it to taste good but that's why i made it only a teaspoon yeah it's less sugar oh, yeah. yeah this is it's so not, much like, originally it was gonna brutal. be an ounce it was an ounce and then I, I was like hold up these days nobody's putting an ounce of syrup into their drink yeah right so i'm like we're gonna cut that in half nice keep the cannabis the same and i um sort of increase the intensity of it and uh reduce the volume Great. So I think we're Good at like idea. 30 calories a serving or something like that. Yeah, but it's pretty and, manageable. And also like the drinks that are on the market, like I've seen drinks, uh, 355 milliliter drinks that have 30 more grams of sugar than this yeah. has. Actually, in, in if it. you look at our packages, it says zero grams of sugar. And uh, apparently because the serving is so small, if like in between certain percentages just gets valued at zero. Oh. But like it's like so small, even though it's all sugar and oh, water. Oh, that's great. It's like just a small amount of sugar. Wonderful. Cool. Yeah, and it tasted so good that it was kind of, and you said it was cane sugar? This one's cane sugar. So we talked about the first two syrups, and then the last syrup I have is more of, um, you know, it's less about a cocktail, and it's more, it's, so it's, it's, uh, it's called chamomile syrup. It's uh, Ontario um, wildflower honey infused with Italian chamomile tea. Oh. So Ooh. that's like the, that was me bringing my two up, you know, I'm from Ontario, and I've been trained by Italians, and like, so oh, and like I'm a big fan of Italian chamomile tea. It's like there's a brand that's really good. Yeah. So I made a syrup based with that, and then that's infused with um, one to one to one THC, CBD, CBN. So the whole idea of that product is for uh, bedtime, right? Yeah. Chill. You know, call. You know, and like I've taken it when I was stressed out and it didn't put me to bed. 
one time it really calmed me down and another time it knocked me out so yeah, I think it does its job yeah. and it comes in one of these as well and, and like you can take it as a shot because you know like it's not uncommon to take a little spoon of honey like just like yeah. calm yeah. down it's good for you honey's actually good for you right yeah so, oh, it lots of uh, healing qualities yeah it's one of okay the so that's things. what I was gonna say you can just take this directly you can yeah, yeah. yeah. great yeah. I mean there's syrup but like the honey one for sure the other one's like it's syrup it's gonna taste like that yeah it's gonna taste so, like yeah. sweet it was perfect in kombucha but yeah i could see sparkling water just being amazing and i have two oils too so it's an avocado coconut oil it's a vegan butter oil so it's an alternative to butter oh, shit. like a vegan alternative to butter so wow. it's like a pretty it's like similar mouthfeel to like melted butter it's like neutral in flavor it's great for baking and so um that's on market wow and then, and this one's about to come out this is a uh, chili oil with uh, thc and cbg so that's gonna be like in droppers for dropping a chili company. oil. Yeah, Dude, mad, mad silly chili oil. Mad silly chili. Yeah, hello. Wonderful. That's great. Awesome. When will this be out? Uh, we just sipped it to OCS on uh, May twenty sixth. Oh, so it's one milligram of THC. To one milligram of THC, half a milligram per milliliter. Yeah. Per milliliter, how many yeah. milli, milli? Sixty milliliters. You get sixty servings in it. So there's 60 milligrams of THC in here? There will be. <laughs> Not in this one. This is a sample bag, but yes. Right, but 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 that's when you buy it at the store. Yeah. It will be. I, it's going to be 60 milligrams THC and 30 milligrams CBG. Mmm, wonderful. Oh, CBG is so nice. It's the happy one. I've been smoking And that's some just of it. such a nice, like, you can just dose yourself. Mad silly chili. If I were to do it all over again, I would have dosed it 10 times stronger. Yeah, yeah. 600. You can do that? You can because it's a concentrate. It just would have been expensive. Hello. Yeah. How, what is this uh, retailing for around? I think it's going to be like around 30. I can't recall exactly, but something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And then what would the expensive one be? 10 times like 300? Um, no, but it probably would have been like... I mean, over it's probably a hundred or something. Like yeah. no one We're just not that. ready for it. Yeah. People don't We're know how to quite invest there. quite but if yet. anybody yeah. wants something, you know, they can call me. You know, yeah, so. holler. <laughs> yeah, where can people find you? Instagram, right? Yeah. Dope Cocktails? Yeah. Instagram. We'll link that up in the description dope, below. Dope Cocktails. Dope Doc. The Dope Cocktails account has must have got a lot of followers from me. Sick. Because it's not me. So. Oh. No, Dope. I'm Dope Doc Cocktails. There's another guy that's Dope Cocktails. That's not me. Oh, yeah. did you? What he was he there first or? Did, yes. Yeah. Okay. You put in the doc. And like yeah. I've reached out. He's yeah, not around. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's not around. I hasn't replied. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That happens. This is the internet. What a cool <laughs> journey, man! Congratulations yes. on everything. Thank you. And the Thanks bounce, the bounce back is strong. The force is strong in this one. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what you continue to bring to market, man, and how your journey continues to unfold and do cool things. Thank you very much. Love, bro. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Absolutely. Any closing words, Win? Just love each other. Love yourself. Oh, yeah. Forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Heal people. Heal people. I can keep going. Any closing thoughts? Um, I just... I don't know. Be nice to other people. <laughs> Isn't that the most these simple, are, these kindest, are wonderful thing? Wonderful, stoner, beautiful things to say. <laughs> Love that? yourself and others and be kind. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a dick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. If you need it in that term. All right. Subscribe. Tell a friend. Screen record a part of this and post it and tag us. Discipline. And thanks for watching. I love you guys. What's your discipline? I'll see you soon. You were stoner? That's cool. So are we. I'm high a lot. It's weird to finally say that with pride. I'm high a lot. Being high has helped me with my anxiety. It's helped my social skills. Well, it's helped me feel okay about my shitty social skills. It doesn't make my social skills better. But it sure does make sitting in that awkward moment in a social interaction a lot more bearable. You know, that moment where no one in the group has anything left to say, and you desperately want to yell at all of them to just, just say something? Being high makes that hilarious and not torture. Yo, yo, yo. It's a living from Anger Town. It's Plant is
helped me chill out, found focus, found confidence. All of a sudden, I was productive, less protective, more progressive. Yeah, we talk about stuff like I'm a next sommelier, but this is about a medicine, baby. We wish everyone a mindful life. It's been a helpful tool for us. Whatever the route to peace, it's each individual's journey. And the more we communicate, maybe we can all help each other out. Love and light. Welcome to Discipline Stoners Podcast with your host, Eleven. And my name is Winnie. And we are the gateway drug to mindfulness. Take a hit. What was I saying again?